Hoop dreams set to become a reality on Thursday at the NBA draft. Just a couple sleeps and still no concrete name attached to that first overall pick. Jabari Smith still sporting the shortest odds at minus 150, but that's a whole lot more palatable a number than it was 48 hours ago. Paulo Boncaro uh, benefiting from the news cycle. He's two to one to go one overall, but was much longer than that just a bit ago as well. It's believed to be one of three, whether it be Smith, Boncaro, or Holmgren, at number one overall to Orlando. And joining us now to break it all down, CBS Sports College Hoops writer Kyle Boone and Vegas insider Todd Furman. Kyle, Todd's going to undoubtedly offer us some sort of value play here at number one overall, so lay the groundwork for us. What's the latest you're hearing out of Orlando in that number one pick? Yeah, the expectation is that it's going to be Jabari Smith going number one. The odds kind of line up right now. He is minus 150 to go number one overall. As soon as the lottery balls fell and Orlando got the number one pick, the expectation has been all along that it was probably going to be Jabari Smith. Now, we've seen some movement in the betting markets mm -hmm. over the last 24 to 48 hours that maybe Palo Bancaro is moving into the number two spot in terms of favorites to go number one overall, but I don't think there's too much to make of that. Uh, Jabari Smith has for a long time now kind of been considered the number one pick favorite. And I think going into Thursday, um, even though the betting markets are moving just a little bit, um, the odds on him at one point I've seen was as much as minus 400. Uh, minus 150 is a little bit better odds, but uh, I, I still don't, I'm not putting too much stock into that at this point. You know, it's always interesting, Kyle, when you look at the betting markets, especially for the NBA draft, because there's just not that much money in the pool. So it doesn't take a ton like the NFL draft to really shift some of these numbers. And with Paulo Bancaro having such high odds, I believe he was available at 25 to one earlier in the process. We've seen that number come crashing down. And to your point, it did start to move even more yesterday where you could have had four and a half or five to one on him at Caesars. Now the price gets to be a little bit more manageable, and I'll agree it's a two-horse race. I don't see a scenario where Chet Holmgren comes off the board at number one unless the Magic have really played their cards tight to the vest, especially given that he didn't want to work out for him. He wasn't forthcoming with his medical either. So at two to one, it's a little bit tougher to make a case for Bancaro, but that's the direction I'm going to go. I just think Orlando needs a player that's capable of creating his own shot out there. And while Smith is a nice piece at 6'10", we know he can block shots and be a defensive presence and also stretch a defense, I feel like they need a player that can create from the perimeter and go inside as well. I'll take a flyer here on Boncaro to be the surprise to kick things off on draft night. The second overall pick goes to Oklahoma City Thunder, ranking last in points per game, field goal percentage, and three-point percentage. The Thunder had the fourth worst record in the NBA this past season. Thursday night will be the franchise's third time picking second overall and just their first top five pick since selecting James Harden in 2009. Todd, who are you liking to be the second name we hear called? So this is all cause and effect. And unfortunately, if you get one wrong, it's uh, awfully tough to try and get number two to head in your right direction. So for me, because I think Bancaro goes number one, I'm going to take Jabari Smith at plus $1.45 to go off the board of the Oklahoma City Thunder. I really believe if he fell to number two, they would be absolutely thrilled with him over a player like Chet Holmgren, in my opinion. You look at what Jabari was able to do in his one season down on the Plains, and the numbers speak for themselves. Uh, I think this is the perfect kind of building block for a team like the Thunder that already has some guards that they really like, highlighted by Shea Gilgis Alexander. And I think uh, Jabari at plus 145, and for me, too much value to pass up. I just have to hope he's available for Sam Presti to be able to take him at number two. Yeah, and I agree with you there, Todd. I, I think that Jabari going off the board at number one is most likely. If he's there at number two, OKC is scooping him up. I don't think there's any question about that. I like Chet Holmgren here at, at number two, and obviously he's the favorite at minus 140 to go number two to the Oklahoma City Thunder. What's crazy is Palo Bancaro has the second best odds of going number one in this draft, uh, but Chet is actually the favorite to go number two. Bancaro has the third best odds of landing at number one. So I, I think based off kind of the betting markets and what we're hearing from NBA front offices right now, it looks like it's gonna be Jabari Smith and Chet Holmgren in that order, one and two on draft night. Obviously uh, the betting markets line up that way. Certainly you can get better odds if you're tailing Todd here. And I think that's certainly interesting. It does not feel like we are totally settled on who is going to go in these top few slots, but 
Uh, Chet, to me, I think is, is the logical pick for OKC. They're looking to add some front court depth. Uh, they've been rumored to really like Chet, and uh, this, makes, this makes sense here. At minus 140, it looks like in the betting markets, um, he, is, he is the clear favorite at number two. Yeah, the raw skill of Chet Holmgren really the uh, ace in the hole here, the curveball that could be thrown our way. It feels like, and the odds outline it, that there's that obvious trio, Chet, Jabari, Paolo, Todd, you've got Boncaro and Smith off the board here in your game of cause and effect. And Holmgren, as we've said, sort of this unicorn type ball of clay that might require some time and development. Is this the ideal spot in your eyes to then take a flyer on a longer number? I mean, can I have Paulo Bancaro go to the Houston Rockets? Because if he's there at three, <laughs> this is a no brainer. The Rockets have not been shy about professing their love for what he would mean to their organization. The other thing that's interesting for Houston, I'm not sure I can necessarily rule out a trade. If Orlando feels that they can get their guy by trading down, there's always an opportunity that he could go to Houston. If he's there, I think that's the direction that the Rockets will go. But the other thing for me, when I look at some of the prices that are there, I don't see Chad Holmgren as a fit if he's available going to Houston. I think they could go in a different direction, maybe chase after some of that tantalizing potential that's out there whether it's a Jaden Ivey out of Purdue, or the player that I think has sparked more questions and debates, not just in betting markets, but in basketball circles that I truly respect, is Shaden Sharp, trying to figure out what this guy can bring to an NBA organization, because we never had a chance to see him at the collegiate level. I think there are more questions that have to be answered there, but the thing about it with the NBA, more so than the NFL, it's all about potential. I wouldn't hesitate to try and take a flyer there with Sharp or Ivy, thinking we get the first major surprise at three if the Rockets can't get their guy in the Duke product. Yeah, and I think, Todd, all you need to know is Palo Caro came in for a workout, and on that same day he worked out for the Houston Rockets. They trade away their starting power forward in Christian Wood. So <laughs> I think they clearly really like this guy. Uh, he is the favorite, has been linked to the Houston Rockets for a long time. I looked at the betting markets earlier. Caro was minus 400 to go number three. That The odds have improved a little bit. looks like they're minus 330 now. So... Uh, he's, he's obviously the favorite. You can't get great odds on it. But Bencaro, uh, to me, if he's still on the board and Jabari Smith and, and Chet Holmgren are already selected, he is the obvious pick. There's three kind of standout big men in this draft, Jabari Smith, Chet Holmgren, and Paolo Bencaro. I think, you know, whatever the first two teams do, they'll just pick up whoever is still left on the board. Well, then next on the clock is going to be Sacramento. They're looking to snap the longest playoff appearance drought in NBA history. This is the first time the Kings are picking fourth overall since 09. Kyle, who are you leaning towards in this spot? I, I think it's probably going to be Jaden Ivey, but Keegan Murray at plus odds here. It's actually looking like it's it's minus 130. So the odds have shifted already since I looked at this earlier. Uh, Keegan Murray to me is a, is a pretty interesting one. Obviously, Jaden Ivey is the favorite at minus 160. But the Kings have gone against the grain in drafts in recent years based solely on roster construction. This is a franchise, if you remember, drafted Marvin Bagley over Luka Doncic. So Ivey on the Kings. You know, on, on paper, it's not a great fit uh, with De'Aaron Fox and, and Davion Mitchell being drafted last year. But, you know, based off reporting, it sounds like the Kings also really like Keegan Murray. So you can get some pretty good odds here. Um, Keegan Murray as, as a potential number four pick, I think, is, is pretty interesting to Sacramento. I mean, let's be honest here, Kyle. If there's one team in the draft that could draft 37 like-minded pieces, it'd be the Sacramento Kings and then figure mm -hmm. out what to do with them later when they miss the playoffs yet again this time next year. But one of the things you brought up was Keegan Murray, and I think the Kings have been relatively outspoken about believing that they're in a win-now mode. Not quite sure what they see that the rest of us don't, but a player, in my opinion, that is the most polished that they would have the chance to draft here would indeed be Keegan Murray. You look at Murray... In my opinion, he's got the highest floor of any guys that are going to go off from the top five, but I don't think he has a ceiling anywhere close to some of the other players that will be drafted around him. And at 22, what you see is probably what you're going to get, a consummate veteran leadership here, a guy who can score the basketball but doesn't wow you with anything he does, either on the offensive or defensive end from a pure athleticism standpoint. And to Kyle's point, this number has been on the move. It wouldn't shock me at all if we end up seeing Keegan Murray go to the Kings over Jaden Ivey throwing a wrench into the plans, especially when we start to talk about the Pistons and their options they'll have at number five. Yeah, known Kings apologist, producer Ryan Stryker wants Jaden Ivey. Just, <laughs> just got to put that out into the ether, got to speak it into existence for him. Not sure that he's liking the numbers on Murray. That's the, the early scouting report from upstairs, guys. Uh, let's talk about number five and the trickle-down effect in Detroit. 
looking to put something next to last year's top overall pick in Cade Cunningham. Kyle, fit the need with your current board. Who hears their name called at five? Well, if Jaden Ivey's on the board, he is an auto pick here. If this is kind of the cause and effect that we're going through the scenarios and seeing, okay, if Keegan Murray is taking a number four, most likely it's Jaden Ivey who the Kings would be passing on here. Uh, the odds plus 225 for him to go number five. I think the Pistons and, and Jaden Ivey would be just a perfect marriage. Cade Cunningham uh, next to next to Cade Cunningham, I think he would be a dynamic creator. He's a guy who can really get downhill, play make, can, can maybe ease some of that offensive creation burden off of Cade Cunningham. Uh, Keegan Murray, I, I think, is a, is a potential uh, candidate to be a good fit here at number five. But again, you get plus money on, on Jaden Ivey. I think this is this is a potential star pairing, and I like the odds here at, at plus 225. So it makes a ton of sense. And I think when you're talking about the price here, knowing that I don't believe the Kings will take uh, you know Ivey at number four, that he would make logical sense to the Pistons. But in the off chance that the Kings do decide to draft yet another guard, I think it opens up the opportunity for two other players with significantly longer odds to offer a little bit of a value proposition. One we talked about earlier in Shaden Sharp, not knowing exactly where he was going to fall. You look at his over-under for draft position at eight and a half. You have to lay a price to go over, but I think he's got that boomer bust working for him. And then the player pictured here, Benedict Matherin, we've seen his number on the move, not only for his over-under and draft position at six and a half, or eight and a half early on the process down to six and a half. Now you have to lay a price to go under and plus 650 down to five to one to be a member of the Pistons. You'll love the maturity that we've seen from him. He carried himself quite nicely through a lot of the interview processes and some of the pre-camp workouts. I think Matherin at five and a half to one or five to one, I guess I should say now at Caesars makes an awful lot of sense if you're trying to put up a little bit and try and catch lightning in a bottle here. Well, Todd, plenty of other ways to bet on Thursday's draft night. What is your top over under NBA draft position? So this one is a little bit chalky, Sherry, but I think it's a player that, in my opinion, has a number of logical landing spots between picks eight and 12. So I'm going to go under 12 and a half for Osmani Dieng, the French product. When you look at what he brings to the table, you're talking about 6'10 in length. It did take him a little while to adjust to life in a significantly better basketball league than the French third division. Down in Australia, playing for the New Zealand Breakers, he showed elite perimeter skills, playmaking potential. His numbers don't blow you away, only 8.9 points per game and a shade more than three rebounds a contest. But over the final 12 games, I think the reason that we've seen his stock climb is he started shooting the ball a lot better from beyond the arc, up this season, shooting percentage up to 35%. There are logical concerns, as there seem to be with most of the players that are talked about as lottery selections here. Shooting consistency and frame, he obviously needs to add bulk. But this is a guy I can see coming off the board somewhere inside the top 10. If not, we have a little bit of insurance, so I'm willing to lay $1.50 that he goes between picks 1 and picks 12. Yeah, and I've got two picks that I'm going to make here. Number one is Dyson Daniels, the over on six and a half. I think the top four are pretty locked in at this point. Uh, Keegan Murray is going to end up going somewhere in, in the top five. Then you get to the Pacers at six, and you kind of wonder what direction they're going to go. Uh, this is a team that just traded for Tyrese Halliburton, a long, smart, defensive-minded wing who's a really good passer. Pretty much exactly kind of the the archetype of Dyson Daniels. I don't think he's going at number six. I certainly don't see him going in the top five. So I think logically you're going to take the over there. Um, you, you don't have great odds here, but I, I do think this is a pretty easy selection. And the second one, I'm going to go with Jeremy Sohan out of Baylor. I'm taking the under on 11 and a half, and you're getting some pretty good odds here. Uh, this is a tricky one because if Sohan slips past 11, I think he's absolutely getting snatched up by the Thunder at 12. Uh, so then you look back, Pacers at six, Portland at seven, the Pelicans at eight all make some sense, especially with the Pelicans being in kind of win now uh, mode after, after making the playoffs this past year. He's a guy who can defend one, two, three, four, and five positions on the basketball court, a really rare athlete. Uh, the shot is a major question mark, but this is a guy to me who could end up going in the top 10 on draft night. I would take the under on 11 and a half on his draft position. All right, our top picks for NBA draft preview. Thank you, Todd Furman and Kyle Boone. All right, let's get your recap of their NBA draft wagers. Make sure you take a picture, write these down, do what you got to do. A lot of information, but a lot of familiar names to be called, like Paolo Bencaro, Chet Holmgren, 
and Jabari Smith. The NBA draft is this Thursday starting at 8 p.m. Eastern. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.